Good morning class, I am Dr. Clapp and today we're going to be talking about Neisseria gonorrhea. Uh, Neisseria gonorrhea is transmitted by having sexual intercourse or during childbirth by infected mothers. The bacteria causes changes in host cell signaling that trigger the trigger microvilli elongation to wrap around the bacterial cell and this way it can invade human epithelial cells at the site of infection. It colonizes almost all mucosal surfaces. Symptoms are seen both in men and in women. In men, it causes neutrophils to migrate to infection sites and phagocytose the bacterial cells causing pro-inflammatory cytokines and damaging tissue, leading to symptoms like dysuria, which is burning during urination, and discharge. Symptoms in women are different. Um, many women kind of go untreated for a long time. And because of this, it causes infertility because the bacteria infects their uterus and fallopian tubes. Other, other things that can happen are pelvic inflammatory disease, ectopic pregnancies, and self different forms of disease. If it infects the throat, it is called gonococcal pharyngitis. If it infects the eyes, it is called gonococcal ophthalmitis. Let's discuss what we know about gonorrhea. Did you do your assignments? Jamie, what do you know about gonorrhea? Well, I don't really know what I'm doing here, uh, but I kind of remember from some class a while ago that uh, it's called Neisseria gonorrhea, and it's gram negative, I think. And it was discovered by some dude named Albert Neisser in 1897. Uh, I think it's been around for a long time. Uh, I'm pretty sure the English Parliament in 1161 uh, put out a decree to regulate the spread of some infirmity of burning, which kind of sounds like a symptom of gonorrhea, but that's probably all about it that I know. So Rona, tell me about what you know about epidemiology and uh, how many people are affected in you? I did my research, I found that um, epidemiology of gonorrhea. There's 309,000 cases in 2011, um, and there were about 100.8 per 100,000 people, so it was very common. Um, there was more in women than in males, slightly, but um, aged 15 to 24, the females had it. Um, males were only 20 to 24 years old. Um, and the majority was present in the ages of 15 to 29, mostly in um, black races. Um, the least race actually was Asians. Um, I don't know how surprising that is. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to tell you guys what I know about gonorrhea. Kind of uh, piggybacking off of what Ronak said earlier. Gonorrhea is the second most common SCI, oh, bacterial SP, uh, SCI, um, second only to chlamydia. Um, it's most prevalent, uh, prevalent like Ronak said, um, in young people and African Americans. Young people, so uh, probably between 15 um, and 24 years of age. Um, it occurs mostly about 70% prevalence in that age group. I would say that in our community, in the University of Florida, well, in your community, <laughs> it's probably the fact that there are a high density population of of individuals between the ages of 15 and 24, and you're all having sexual contact with one another. And any kind, any form of sexual contact, as we all know, leads to gonorrhea. So, Oprah, I know this gonorrhea is, it's foreign as well, but is it spread in the U.S. too? Well, to answer your question, gonorrhea is prevalent in all countries in, in, around the world where they have sex. In fact, it's most prevalent in uh, African countries and other developing nations. 
uh, around the world. So Horace, how do doctors go about diagnosing this disease? And tell me about the prevention and if there's any prevention available. That was an excellent point, Horace. Lindsay, how is the disease being currently treated? Well, Oprah, that's an excellent question. Bacteria, like Neisseria gonorrhea, is usually treated with antibiotics. Uh, things like sulfonamides, penicillin, tetracycline, and fluoroquinolones. But the ones I just uh, mentioned are actually the bacteria is now resistant to those antibiotics. So today, doctors use things such as cefixime and um, ceftriaxone, and they use azithromycin and even doxycycline. Like there are there are other options, but a big problem we're having with it now is the resistance of the bacteria to these antibiotics. Is there uh, any current news regarding gonorrhea? Current new topics of gonorrhea have actually happened in Canada, and there's nine new patients with a new antibiotic strain, or a new antibiotic resistant strain that cannot be treated with regular oral antibiotics anymore, and they have to be treated with an injectable kind. Since gonorrhea is a public health issue, can you tell me any future implications regarding public health and gonorrhea? Some future implications that the public might want to be aware of is that we may be entering into a new age where our regular antibiotics do not cure gonorrhea anymore. But it's up to scientists and hopefully they can find new antibiotics that uh, cure you from gonorrhea. Jamie, wake up. Jamie, you've missed a whole lecture on gonorrhea. Jamie, wake up.